guys, so I'm really excited to share the results of our most recent walking book club um, in partnership with audible.com. You can go and download audiobooks by signing up at audible.com slash your heart though. Ding! But if you just like to read books, it's totally okay for you to read books or check them out at the library as well. What matters to me is that you guys find um, happy participation in this book club of joy and love. Yay! Uh, so please forgive this long unedited video. Uh, I'm just going to kind of read through everything that I've had and I've written down from you guys' reviews and my own review and that sort of thing. Um, but then I'm also linking to a playlist with the amazing video reviews that you guys submitted. If I missed your video review somehow, please just let me know on Tumblr. Um, by using the hashtag walking book club and I will do my best to find it and add it to the playlist as well if you do not want your video review on the playlist again just contact me using the hashtag walking book club and let me know the last thing I want is somebody having public information on the internet that they don't want public um, but thank you for participating either way so if you guys uh, can tell I'm getting ready for my grandpa's anonymous meeting for all the grandpas of America meaning me Grandpa Hannah. So I can't wait to go to that. But first, let's talk about The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Uh, not only did I really enjoy this book, my mind was blown by how many of you enjoyed this book and benefited from it. I've got my notes, I'm just gonna read them. And that's, this has all been introductory, so I'm just gonna go straight to it. Uh, one of the first things that I saw and also observed in reading the book and saw from one of your videos is that everyone has dreams. Now, I think, to me, Having a dream does not mean having some lofty goal that is completely unachievable. It just means you're going to do something, have something, or be something, even if that something is happy. Trying to be happy. Um, Haley, whose video I watched and is down below, also felt this way and put it really eloquently in her video. So thank you, Haley, for that. Uh, so when reading The War of Art, even if you're not an artist, or when listening to The War of Art, rather, think of it more in terms of any goal in your life, regardless of whether or not it's a production of a creative product. You know, it could just be as simple as um, being more honest. Maybe that, you know? A lot of, it's hard to be honest. Some people have trouble with honesty. Totally a real deal. Uh, my next thing I put here, oh, is the book discusses fear. And now I think this is really an interesting point. Um, fear and doubt over something put you on the right track. Uh, think of it this way. It can be applied even in terms of like faith. If you don't question your faith, if you don't have doubt in your faith, then your faith is not strong. Questioning something shows that you are thinking about it on a deeper level. You're processing it past the surface. So when you ask yourself if you're a writer or you're this or you're that or whatever your dream, goal, happy thing is, and you're questioning it, am I really A, B, C, or D? It just shows that you care and that it's actually in you and that you're really, truly thinking about it. If you never worried or wondered whether or not the person you perceived yourself to be was true, that would just mean you're totally delusional. And I mean, come on, man. Everybody has to question things. Otherwise, you don't know if it's legitimate or not. Questioning is good. Embrace the questions. Rilke writes about that too. I love Rilke. I can't get through anything without mentioning it. Um, this quote was quoted in one of the videos. It's one thing to lie to yourself, but it's another thing to start believing it. Another excellent point. You can lie to yourself all you want, as long as you're still aware it's a lie. When you start believing the lie you're telling yourself, which is that you're like a failure or not good enough, that's where you've gone too far. You're not a failure and you are good enough. That helicopter agrees. I really hope when helicopters go by you guys can hear them too and you don't just think I have this weird constant helicopter thing happening in my head. Number three, something I learned from the book and the reviews, people like reading. Cool, that's awesome, or listening. Whichever is the best way for you to take in information. I just say audible.com slash your heart though because I don't know, if you're super busy, an audiobook is helpful. But you can also read books. Reading is good. Just, you know, expand your brain. Uh, number four. Ooh. Um, this point was made by uh, another one of the reviews see, featured below. Um, she said that artists, she brought up that artists don't want to work until after they've healed. Uh, there will never be a reason, there will always be a reason not to do something, and there will never be a perfect scenario. The sooner that you accept that, the sooner you can move forward. A lot of artists think when I'm better at A, B, C, or D, 
they will be able to do the thing they want to do. Um, or a lot of people think that way or feel that way. Uh, there will never be a life without excuses to not do something. The excuses just stem from fear and worry which keep you from moving forward. So if you'd like to move forward, just accept the fact that that will happen, you know? If you were like perfect and 100% fully formed, then what would be the point of being alive? If it weren't for our imperfections, we would have nothing to progress towards. And for me, I truly believe life is about journeying forward. You know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The only thing that always remains the same and is static is not being alive. So the more you question and the more you uh, feel like you're imperfect, the more human and actually alive you are. It's not just you, it's everybody. Hopefully that'll make you feel a little bit better. Number five. Oh, this was interesting. Um, one of you felt that the book was totally unrelatable and super pretentious and that the author was in fact flaunting his ability not to procrastinate um, as opposed to educating or informing or trying to relay the tools that worked for him. Um, cool. I hadn't uh, thought of it that way. Maybe it did come off as pretentious to some. Um, but I encourage you, if you do have trouble with procrastination or resistance, as is the giant overarching theme of the book, uh, find somebody whose voice you can relate to. Maybe uh, there are other recommendations that you users can share with each other in the new incredible comments format below. Yay. So if you're the one watching who left that review or if you also felt that the book was unrelatable due to tone or voice or yada yada yada, um, okay, let's try and find you a book that works. Next. Do, 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 do. Uh-oh. There we go. Six. Ah, here's a great point. Resistance. Uh, as is defined by many other things. It could be procrastination, just reasons not to do something. That's what resistance is. Uh, shows you what you actually want. If you didn't resist something, as in not resist, it's not resist, if you read the book, this would make sense. Um, it's not resistance like a bad way, like, ooh, it's a negative thing I don't want. It's the excuses that keep you from achieving the thing you want to achieve. Uh, that is like an indicator light for something that you care about. This relates back to questioning, back to fear, back to bat doubt. Just, it's all part of thinking deeply over something. And something will keep cropping up in your mind because it's something you want. So maybe you should do yourself a favor and listen to that voice and pay attention to the thing you want instead of letting that reminder that you want something weigh you down, let that reminder push you towards it. So next time you're at your desk being like, wow, this isn't the life I want, don't be like, so I suck. Be like, okay. But how do I get to the life I want? Maybe. Um, Oh, number seven, next one. Uh, somebody said that when they feel overwhelmed, they think about the fact that they've probably got a lot of time left in their lives, uh, 70, 40, 50, however many years you have left, um, takes the pre pressure off for them. That's a great, great thing. If you know that about yourself, it's awesome. For me, I'm only productive with the increased pressure of a deadline or being accountable or responsible to another person. I know that about myself. I know that I need for me personally, to be able to work towards something, I have to have it be in a weird way for somebody else. Uh, which is why you guys made my life so incredibly great. Because I feel like I'm doing this for you and that inspires me to help, that helps me actually do things, you know? Having deadlines, having reason, having motivation, it makes me move forward. Uh, for this person, having time helps them feel alleviated from pressure, which helps them move forward, uh, which is lovely. And I, if, it's, if that's good for some of you, then maybe it's good for more. So, yay. Um, oh, number eight. I just wanted to give a shout out to the person who are, or persons who are participating in NaNoWriMo, which is November National Write a Novel in a Month Month. Um, title not true. Uh, congratulations. Good luck writing a novel in a month. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. It's taken me 10 months, 11 months to get 60 pages of my cookbook finished. So, good job writing something in a month. That's <laughs> awesome. What happens is, guys, it takes a really long time to write, but I'll make that an entirely other separate video about how you can block out two hours of your day to write, write 25 pages, and only like two of them. But the good thing is that you wrote anything at all. But another video for another time.
Number nine. Um, oh, this is a question for you guys. What's your form of resistance? Uh, is it procrastination? Is it projection? Procrastination meaning all the things that keep you from doing something like, ooh, I'm gonna do this, uh, I'm gonna do this, ooh, Tumblr, ooh, laundry. That's cool, productive procrastination is kinda cool. Uh, is it projection, as in predicting the future that doesn't actually exist, meaning giving in to worry and doubt and fear and like the idea of what other people are gonna think about you? Or um, produce, is it vegetables? Does that keep you from doing it? Veggies scare you a lot? Could be, some people hate greens. I love the greens as in John and Hank. Uh, anyway, point is resistance takes many forms. Just do it though. Just try even a little bit in any way, shape, or form you can imagine and then give yourself huge mad props for it. Which brings me to number 10. None of this is easy. It's not easy. No one's saying it's easy. It's hard. So if it doesn't seem easy to work on the thing that you love because you care about it so much, congratulations, you have something you care about. Isn't that great? Um, don't be defeated just because it's not easy or it doesn't seem to be coming naturally. A lot of people question themselves on whether or not they have any talent or are an artist or is this something I should even do or career path or whatever the dream that they have is be flowing out of themselves naturally or easily or whatever. Um, the point is, and this was made uh, in Mr. Snail's video, who's also in the playlist below, um, it's not the work, it's working. And I love that. It's all a part of it's not the destination, it's the journey. I can tell you right now, trying to write this cookbook, I am so entrenched in working on this cookbook and it's not easy. It feels like working, it feels like a challenge. It feels like working hard. You know, um, Mr. Snail makes a great point about the difference, uh, reiterating Pressfield's point about the difference between amateurs and professionals. Amateurs view their art, remember we're using art to mean any goal or that sort of thing, uh, as a precious, infallible thing. So it's like, oh, it's so delicate and great, ah! Wow, I can't ever do anything with it because it's so perfect. That's amateurish way of thinking about it. A professional way of thinking about it is that it is a flawed, hot mess. The title of my first draft is literally Big Shitty First Draft. And that's the only thing that makes me write. I'm like, this is gonna be shit. Just gotta do it. Dad's doing it. Wow, this is terrible. That's okay. The point is that you're building the muscle of doing it. <laughs> doing it, muscle. Um, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, me, that was that. Uh, let me put this over here. Those are my notes. Um, sorry if I missed one of your videos. Again, help me find it. And um, thank you guys so much for participating in the book club. Uh, please leave your recommendation for our next book club. Um, it can be you know, available on audible.com slash yourhearto. And let's find something else to do. I'm really, really happy with the feedback from this. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I don't know why I'm saying everything in threes, uh, but I am. So. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And um, yeah, I encourage you to read the book if you missed out, download it if you missed out. And that's really it for me, guys. Um, oh, and look forward to tomorrow's Thursday video because I have a big announcement about Australia and New Zealand. Hello, Heart Doe. Okay, have a great day. Yay!